Now time for Give Me the Headlines, presented by Hyundai. Three games here, and we'll start with the Dallas Cowboys defeating the New York Giants. What's your headline for this one? Well, Big D beats Little Blue. Oh, no. Yeah, it hurts me because it's supposed to be Big Blue and oh, Little no. D in my place, <laughs> in my house. Yeah. You know me. I'm a Giants fan. I but, know. man, this 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 Dallas defense, you just kind of hit on it. Dak's been slumping lately. Dallas defense is the star of the show, period. They are absolutely on fire, you know, the last two weeks. Talk about the biggest turnaround from a unit in football. I think it has to be the Dallas I, Cowboys I think it defense. does. I mean, it, it really is. From one year to the next, yes. even within this year, it was great. Like, early in the year, it was really good. Then they went through the injuries and went through a little slump, and I went, well, this is, you know, I kind of think what their defense was. Shame on me for, you know, n- you know, maybe not publicizing the injuries on the defensive line and what an effect it had on their defense sure. because, man, it pops when they're healthy. It really does. They can create a lot of mismatches up front. I broke it down last week on the Wednesday What the F*** Happened podcast. But when you talk about you have Lawrence and Randy Gregory and Micah Parsons and then, hey, whatever defensive end you want to put else in there, Terrell Basham with one D tackle, they can move these guys around and get the matchups they want. And then with those guys and Lawrence and Micah Parsons and Gregory and Basham – you know, they're all capable of dropping back into pass coverage and doing that too. So they have a lot of options to mess with there. And it's it's the pressure by them up front. You know, they cause issues. And then, you know, Michael Parsons just being unbelievable once again. But, yeah, the, the star of the show yesterday, again, was the Dallas D. The offense wasn't all that impressive. The defense set them up for some easy scoring opportunities and, and really dominated that Giants offense. Yeah, the offense still not. They had zero plays of 20 or more yards. Jeez. 4.7 yards per play on all their play. So, the, I mean, the offense was not great, but the defense causing some turnovers, three interceptions. And, uh, yeah, getting the interception with Diggs. Uh, Micah Parsons now has more than 10 sacks. So now you got teammates who have 10-plus interceptions, 10-plus sacks. The first time that's happened since the 2007 Chargers. Wow. Wait, say that stat again there. Say that again They have a for player me? on the defense yeah. with 10 or more interceptions yeah. and 10 or more sacks. Parsons and, and two Diggs. rookies. That's crazy. And so. No, and they're not both rookies. One's a second-year guy. Sorry. Close enough. Yeah. Uh, Chargers' last team to do it, 2007. Wow. Any idea who those players would be on that team? Well, that would be Sean Merriman. Yep. Gosh. With the sacks. Yep. 12 and Hold half on. Sacks. Let's see here. I mean. All right, don't don't answer. Don't give me this. This is not a final answer yet because Quentin Jammer was their corner. He was their best cover guy, but I don't feel like he ever had ten plus interceptions. So it's, it's not him, right? It's not Quentin Jammer. Correct, not him. Gosh, the name is Antonio Cromartie. Antonio Cromartie. Yeah, wow. how about that? Yeah, wow. So yeah, the defense. Those are some good teams there. They went to the AFC Championship that year. Defense carrying Dallas, and they're one game behind the Packers. The possibility of them getting a one seed not out yet. I mean, they are. They could make a make a run here. The offense has got to improve. They got to. They got to. Uh, they got to right the ship a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. There's no doubt. We went through some of the issues last week. You know, again, I do like that they gave the ball to Tony Pollard more yesterday. To me, to me, again, they're 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 dropping the ball. Pollard should be the main ball carrier. Ezekiel Elliott should be the change of pace guy. Mm. That's just the way I look at it. Mm. Pollard's capable of more at this point in his career. But yeah, with Washington football team on the horizon. Arizona than Philadelphia. You know, listen, I expect them to beat Washington and Philadelphia. I do. I'm not going to lie. It won't be easy. Arizona, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but they do have a chance. They certainly do. But the offense, like you've talked about, it's just it's, it's lost its way a little bit. It's not like, oh, wow, it's really concerning, but it's certainly not to the level we saw early in the year where it's explosive and borderline unstoppable there for a time period. There's nothing really explosive about the Miami Dolphins, but they just keep winning. Sixth in a row after starting one and seven. They get the touchdown victory over New York. Your headline for this one is? Oh, I forgot. Let me get back to the sheet here. Okay, okay the Duke of New York. Oh, Duke. Duke Johnson. Duke Johnson. He was the difference for the Dolphins yesterday. Career game for him. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a lot of good runs. Miami slowly but surely been running the ball better over this winning streak. It's not beautiful, um, but 
popped a few few runs yesterday. I mean, I believe, he, you know, of course he was consistently good. I think Gaskin broke a long run later on in the football game, one of the last drives of the game. This was an ugly football game. The Jets had an opportunity, I'm going to just throw this out there, pretty early to really control the game. And I know they were up 17-7. to It should have been worse. You know, Tua was really all over the place early in the game. All over the place. Threw a bad interception. You know, he went into the half, and I told Pete and you guys before we started the show, he went in the half seven for 12 for a little over 100 yards. Of, you know, and one of those incompletions, of course, was an interception. Of the other four incompletions, and I'm not like embellishing, I believe all four, if not it was three, were like in the chest of the Jets players, and they dropped it. And they had opportunities to really like take advantage of a Dolphins team that was kind of like asleep at the wheel early on in the football game. You know, the Jets ran some cool trick plays early. Zach Wilson maybe had the play of the day on the offensive side. They ran like the old like quarterback throwback, and then he looked to throw the ball down the field. Nobody was there. He broke like two tackles, made an awesome play that way. They had a little bit of like a, a hook and ladder play on a third and fifteen that got them a first down at one point. So they had they went to the the the, the trick playbook to kind of get the revolution. They did. Yeah. Say, Here it comes. They did. There it is. Ahmed called it. Uh, but it's coming. But the Dolphins are more talented and can just as the game went on just continued to wear the Jets out. And once the Jets kind of lost a few of those trick plays, their offense wasn't capable of doing anything on that Dolphins defense. Dolphins running the ball. Their defense. Tua found a little rhythm in the second half to be more consistent. You know, I know he threw the pick six. Next drive, they go right down. They run the ball. He has the clutch slant touchdown pass to help them win the football game. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't, but they won nonetheless, and the Dolphins are still one of the hotter teams in the game. Always got to get a dig on Tua. Yeah, I did. Always got to get a dig on Tua. You know, I just call it. I've said many weeks when he's played good that he's played good. I'm not going to just fall back because idiots like Big Cat at Barstool, like, you know, try to start problems on social media. Okay. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. Just because of some, I don't know what it is, some, a fan base that has the, the to and on, the fan base has their, their, their heads up their asses <laughs> and they won't take it for what it is. I've said it before. You can win with them. You just got to have a certain formula. That, that, that's what it is. Um, but either way, he did he did good enough for them to win yesterday. Their defense is still mm-hmm. one of the hottest in the game, and they just harassed Zach Wilson and that that Jets offense constantly through the second half. Might have started too late this whole run because they're seven and seven behind a bunch of teams there in the AFC that look like they have the inside track on a yeah. playoff spot. Final one for the headline: It is Texans defeating the Jaguars thirty to sixteen. Your headline is Jaguars kicked out again. <laughs> Yeah, a lot yeah. of kick, a lot of kicking, a lot of going kicking on. over the last week there within the team. Josh Josh Lambeau got kicked by a ex yep. coach. Yep. Urban Legend says. Yep, Ur- according to Urban Legend. According and, to Urban Legend. In this game, Kaimi Fairbairn, two fifty plus yard field goals in a monsoon. Uh, that, that's where that's where we kind of came up with the headline because it, again, an ugly football game. You know, Davis Mills was consistent, made some good plays. They had a great first drive through the touchdown to Brandon Cooks. You know, Jaguars answer back with a field goal, and then it became the special teams for the Texans to take it over from there. And it was a long kick return that put them up 14-3, to and it was an ugly game after that. Um, but I think when you look at, like, uh, fair – Fairburn is that is that Fair I don't know Baron? why it Fairburn it, it doesn't sound it doesn't right when sound it comes right. out of my mouth I don't know why Pete, I chicken let's get out him, let's get him on the show and ask him but <laughs> but two 50 plus yard field goals like you said at the end of the half where you know games there it's 14 to 10 and now it's 17 10 20 to 10 you know third quarter they have a drive there another field goal that kind of put the game out of reach the Jacksonville offense is just incapable of doing a whole lot and they got James Robinson. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, Trevor Lawrence, you know, again, it's good. It's not great. Which is troubling because the Texans do not have a good defense. No, like, they this don't. should have been the game to feast. It's better statistically than it than I, I, I've said this to Florio a lot. It's better statistically than what it shows. It is. You know, their offense has led to a lot of bad, you know, bad defense. Where they go through stretches where it's like three and out, three and out, three and out, three and out, five and out, three and out, five and out, three and out. And it's just like, well, the defense is going to collapse at some point. They've had a lot of games where I'd go, hey, the game was 10-7 in the third quarter. And they finally just fell apart. Sure. Um, but 
But, uh, yeah, it is. I mean, the way the Trevor Lawrence and the offense have looked in Jacksonville over the last few weeks has not been impressive. He makes a few throws every game where you go, oh, wow. He misses a few throws every game where I go, ah, uh, he shouldn't miss that. And, uh, you know, I just don't think it's a great scheme. You know, running the ball in James Robinson is the best thing they do, but they don't have a lot in the pass game that scares people. And, and of course, that makes life tough on them. Correct me if I'm wrong. Davis Mills has had a better rookie year than Trevor Lawrence. Well, I would say – like, see, he's more – he was maybe a little more NFL ready. He understands how to play the NFL game coming from Stan, Stanford. But I'll like – this is where – I'm not giving up on Trevor Lawrence. If we took his 10 best plays and put him next to Davis Mills' 10 best plays, we'd go, whoa, that's not even close. That throw, that play, that run, Davis Mills could never do that. All right, so that's where I, I'll push back against that to a degree. Yes, he's been – managing games and maybe a hair more consistent on how he runs the offense. But this is what I tried to tell everybody about Trevor Lawrence coming out in the draft a little. He wasn't the machine everybody thought he was throwing the football, and he played an ecology offense. So he's learning on the fly here. But, again, I, I have no doubt that he'll surpass Davis Mills at, at some point okay. next year. All right, maybe not it's this again, year. I'm into the look surprise. in yeah, year no, one. I get it. You know I, me. And I get that. I, I like that way of looking at it. Ten best plays. Compare the ten best plays to each other and see The other stuff's learned stuff. I That's where that. people drop the ball. It's learned. You can teach a guy how to read the play, as long as he's not an absolute idiot, which I don't think Trevor Lawrence or Zach Wilson or Justin Fields or Trey you can teach them how to go through reads or the right thing to do in a situation. Or, you know, when to take a sack. What you can't teach them to do is throw 40-yard lasers down the sidelines or spin move, break a tackle on the run, run for 30 yards, or spin move, break a tackle, get outside the pocket and throw a 40-yard laser. That can't be taught. And Davis Mills can't do that stuff where I'd go, the other guys can. And they can learn the stuff Davis Mills learned, and that's where I don't worry about it. There was a fan on the field in this game. Oh, no. You can't, you can't learn that. And most shows will not show the idiot on oh, the we, field. Go, we, we are idiots. We do. show idiots. We love showing the idiots yes, on the field. Do. So here we go. Someone's pointing there. This was the James Robinson touchdown. Look at the fan. He's on the field. Cop comes in. Ta oh, Ooh, good what tackle. What a great tackle. Good tackle. I like it. Right from behind, takes him down there. So here's the fan on the field. I mean, what if they ran a bootleg play action pass over there? He would have been right in the middle. He would have been it. right in the middle. Yep. He would have. And he's wearing the shorts. I feel like if you run on the field. Got a mullet, maybe? This is where I want to the NFL go to the next level. Mm -hmm. You run on the field. Yeah. The home team gets to pick the biggest, baddest dude on their team, mm -hmm. and you have to stand there on the middle of the emblem, and that guy gets to can crush you. <laughs> That's what I want. Yeah. You don't go to jail or anything. No jail. But Miles Jack gets the ten yard run started and hits you. Uh huh. You don't go to jail. No penalty. We'll see if you can walk for the next week. We're not sure. <laughs> but that's what you get for going on the field. It's kinda of like gladiator, like back in the day. I like right? it. Like Off with his head. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Off with his head. And how many people would do it? Right? I, I think it would be limited. There'd Although be a few if, drunk idiots out there. Exactly. Like, oh, they would do it. I could take it. What if we saw though a death? What if we saw like that if someone got hit so hard they died? It's a, it's a dangerous game running on the field. <laughs> Better watch it. Better think twice next time. <laughs> think twice next time would be the headline of that game. That was give me the headlines presented by Hyundai. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.